Hi there. In this programme, we're going to share a little bit of history with you because we're going to take a look back in time to the earliest days of Irish horse racing to find out where it all began. To understand racing, you need to know something about all horses. The thoroughbred racehorse is a cousin of all other horses, but nonetheless, it's a relative newcomer. As a breed, it belongs to the greater family of equines, which includes donkeys and zebras. Many disappointed racegoers will tell you they backed a donkey, but don't worry, you have to be a thoroughbred to be a racehorse. Human relationships with the horse have been represented in art for 30,000 years. They were first recorded in cave paintings, such as those in Lascaux in France. The nomadic tribesmen of Central Asia first tamed the horse as early as 4,500 BC, and growing domestication and better breeding was a major part in the building of civilized life. That's a big claim, but it's true. As long as we've had horses, we've had racing of one sort or another. The Greeks introduced four horse chariot races at the 23rd Olympiad in 684 BC, and the Circus Maximus, a race course which could hold over 100,000 people, was founded in the 6th century BC in Rome. You can still see it today. The Romans gave us the word equus, meaning horse, and that's why we use the word equine when talking about all kinds of horses. In ancient Ireland, horses and cattle were the main sources of wealth and power. The Curragh in County Kildare, which natives proudly call the Thoroughbred County, was and still is the centre of the Irish horse racing world. There are records of chariot races on the Curragh dating back to the 3rd century AD. I wonder if there was a Johnny Murta back then challenging a Frankie de Tori to come over from Rome. The legendary Fianna are said to have trained for their wards and sporting contests across the wide open plains, which to this day are home to the Irish army, the new Fianna. As early as 1634, there are records of organised racing on the Curragh, similar to what we know today, racing over a fixed distance for a purse, the result decided by an independent judge. With the end of the Puritan era in Britain, Charles the Merry Monarch began to encourage racing with generous patronage. It was called the sport of kings because royal support and prizes were actually the spur to the growth of racing in Britain and Ireland. Royal plates, cups, whips and guineas were the target of fierce competition. There are royal prizes to this day at Down Royal and the Curragh. After chariot racing gave way to flat racing, there was nothing new for quite a few centuries until the Irish invented a new code, steeplechasing in 1752 in Cork. The legendary race between Messrs Blake and O'Callaghan from the steeple of Buttevant Church to Donnerail Church gave rise to one of the most popular forms of racing today. Much of the national hunt season, which we call jump racing, focuses on the Cheltenham Festival in March every year. Irish bred, trained, ridden and owned horses tend to dominate the competition. Irish breeders and trainers have emerged as world leaders in flat racing as well. And today, Coolmore Stud in County Tipperary is one of the leading breeding operations in the world. Royal patronage and big purses generally meant that racing had to develop formal rules and structures to ensure fair competition and resolution of disputes. It was also vital to give confidence in betting on races. There was no internet and no-go racing website back then, so how did they manage to pick a winner? The need for organised racing led to the formation of the Irish Turf Club on the Curragh in 1790. And yes, it's still here. The Turf Club's job is to write the rules of racing and ensure that they're enforced. Following many racing organisations, Horse Racing Ireland, also on the Curragh, was founded in 2001 to administer racing and develop and promote thoroughbred racing and breeding in Ireland. So what's a thoroughbred horse as opposed to just any other horse? Well, the term thoroughbred describes a breed of horse whose ancestry traces back to just three known horses. In the racing world, they're known as the foundation sires, a sire being a daddy. The Darley Arabian, the Godolphin Arabian, and the Bylerly Turk, which was reputedly ridden at the Battle of the Boyne in 1690. They were brought to England from the Middle East around the turn of the 17th century and they were highly prized for their speed and bred to the strong and sturdy native horses of Britain and Ireland. The resulting animals had speed, strength and endurance, which is just what you need in a racehorse. And these thoroughbred bloodlines are scrupulously recorded and observed by the worldwide racing industry. 
Today, there are about 7,500 foals born each year in Ireland. And combining all our stallions, mares and foals, we've about 23,000. There are 10,000 horses in training every year. Quite impressive. Ireland is a land that seems to have a natural ability for breeding fine horses. The combination of climate, a limestone-rich soil and lush grass create the perfect environment for producing some of the finest horses in the world. We may be a small island, but we have a big history and horses have been with us throughout it. The horse has been central to the Irish way of life. We have a real affection and respect for our horses. Now we've more racetracks per head of population in Ireland than in any other country in the world. The Irish enjoy horse racing and are proud of the trainers, jockeys and all those who are involved in making it the successful industry it is. It's steeped in history and that's why they say it's in the blood. Till next time. <laughs>